Hey, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, call hello, Yahweh. By Shimmy Hamashah, by Shimmy Kokodash, double honors, of course. Go out to the apostles, bishops, and elders of Great Millstone and continue through the Holy Spirit to give us His truth. All right, and continue themselves to be out on the highways and byways. All right, this is Nama with the DC camp. Also, salutations go out to fellow Akim out there on the highways and byways across the four corners, pushing his truth, all right, in order to awaken the remaining, hopefully, let, all right? So what you see here, I meant to do this, uh, when did I first see this? Time goes so fast, so, so lucky. Uh, it's been one or two years since I first saw this poster. Uh, the young lady's name was, and is, she's still alive, Sachin Littlefeather. And let me just read the title here. It says, the group behind the Oscars apologized to the Native American woman who refused Marlon Brando's award. Sachin Littlefeather, like I said, refuses the Academy Award for Best Actor on behalf of Marlon Brando. At the 1973 Oscars from presenters Roger Moore and Liv Alden. All right, I believe it was Roger Moore. I don't think he had played James Bond yet. I think at the time it was one of those guys that were one timers. Anyway, for those of you that didn't quite associate <laughs> uh, Roger Moore with James Bond. Yes, he would go on to play, uh, you know, James Bond. He was more of a, a comedic uh, <laughs> James Bond than anything else, but he was very popular. Anyway, so my point in doing this, you say, well, why are you going back to 73? Hey, when we're concerned, it doesn't matter. Uh, just to highlight the fact that this is still going on. All right, this is these are the tribes of Gad. They were over here long before this piece of shit white man. <laughs> All right. And still, you know, these are our brothers and sisters and still they're treated like shit. You got to remember everything that goes on here. This was their land. This was taken from them. They're forced to live and see all this on shitty ass reservations. That's my motivation for doing this. And a surprise. This is something I didn't know until I read this about two years ago. All right, it says the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences has formally apologized all these years later, albeit, to Sachin Littlefeather, the Native American woman who famously took to the Oscar stage in 73, because this is Marlon Brando's way of protesting. This is after he won the award for Godfather, all right? He just said, you know what, fuck it. So he sent her to give a speech because of how the Gad uh, was being portrayed in uh, Hollywood. Okay. And it says she went on to, uh, took, took the stage on behalf of Marlon Brando and refused to accept the Best Actor Prize in protest against Hollywood's depictions of indigenous people. We'll just leave that to say period. So that would include uh, Gad, that would include Issachar, you know, going down the line. Little Feather, now 75, was heckled and subjected to racist abuse. You know what? Let's get a different. Uh, so lucky I meant to do this. I don't know. I just have a habit of going with that uh, the way it normally is instead of uh, going to this. There we go. Now you see, here she is. There's Roger Moore and uh, Liv Ullman. And she's refusing, you see. All right. So let's catch up to where I was. It says, uh, this is from the Academy. Uh, and this was my point in saying, got a surprise. And it doesn't surprise me in that the, the individual that did this it's just the timing of it. And it says, 
A little further down, Sandy Fry was heckled and subjected to racist abuse from the audience during her speech. Recalling later that Western film star John Wayne, yes, that John Wayne, had to be restrained from rushing to stage to attack her. Did you just hear that? Here she is. All right. Giving a speech. Telling the world about how her people are being portrayed and mistreated. All right. In the film industry. A bunch of racist, Edomite, so-called white bastards. And they knew they were doing this. That's why it hit home. And especially with this piece of shit, John Wayne. Yes, he is. A, he, was a, <laughs> he was a racist piece of shit. And I remember reading about, uh, he did a, was it Fu Manchu? He was portraying, of course, which would be so-called Asian. Him and a lot of other actors. And this is how <laughs> he know the most high is real. I want to see if I can find that real quick because I don't want to I, I hate saying things and can't back them up with let's see John Wayne I know Agnes Moorhead was one of the victims uh, she used to play uh, if you ever saw this show uh, Bewitched it came out in the 60s with Elizabeth Montgomery she played her mother in the show Agnes Moorhead uh, let's see John Wayne See how I word this. Diagnosed with cancer. Let's see if this pull it up. Racist best. Let's see. Susan Hayward. Yeah, this is it. This is it. And this is called the see there that is. <sighs> Here it is. After filming The Conqueror near a nuclear testing site. And this is the payback. It says uh, Susan Hayward, I guess that's her in the, in the caption there, and John Wayne sitting together surrounded by unidentified actors in a scene from the film The Conqueror, which is 1956. All right. It says, uh, let me cut to the chase, in 1927, American geneticist Herman Joseph Muller discovered that prolonged exposure to radiation can have crippling effects on human health. All right. Well, in other words, what they're saying is, without me going all over this, they didn't really know to the extent what would happen after all these early on nuclear tests. All right. So these assholes went and did a film in what used to be <clears throat> a nuclear test site. All right. In the Utah desert just 100 miles away from the infamous Nevada test site. <laughs> Approximately 100 nuclear bombs of various yields were detonated at the Nevada test site throughout the 50s. All right, so I'm just, you know, I'll post this, you can read it for yourself. My point is, this racist bastard, he got what he deserved, all right? Let's see, uh, uh, let's see. John Wayne, Susan Hayward, like I said. Uh, let's see. Uh, and they said it was a horrible portrayal. Who was he? Uh, it says Wayne and Hayward weren't too, showing you how proud they were. Uh, weren't too dismayed by the harsh comments of the critics because they said it was a horrible fucking film. I never even heard it until I read this. They said they were both filthy rich and immensely popular, so they simply continued making films. Unfortunately, the fact that the film was shot in the vicinity of a nuclear test site is thought to have affected their lives in a lasting way. All right, Namely, out of 220 people who worked on the production of The Conqueror, 92 died of cancer, including John Wayne, Hayward, and Amandares, I guess. Um, hmm. Let's see. I'm, 
Jesus. And his son, both of them, Patrick and Michael, they developed tumors after they just visited the set. They weren't working there. All right. Uh, Oh, that's a bit. Okay, I remember that film. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. I want to live. That's a good one in case you are. Uh, I didn't want to stray off the path, but I know Agnes Moorhead was one of these motherfuckers too. That's why I was trying. That's what I was looking for. But in any case, <clears throat> there you have it. Uh, you can read it for yourself, like I said. I will post this uh, later on. But let's get back to this because, whoops. Like I say, all this woman, and this is what they're prone to do. Um, I've got another article, I'm gonna do a video. It's current, but it's the same, you know. Here she is, right here. And here she goes on to say, uh, the apology was made in conjunction with an invitation for the little feather who is of Apache and your quiet descent to appear as a featured guest on September 17th, and that's just a month away, exactly, uh, in a special event at the New Academy Museum of Motion Pictures in Los Angeles. Regarding the Academy's apology to me, we Indians are very patient people. It's only been 50 years. We need to keep our sense of humor about this at all times. It's our method of survival. All right, she goes on to say, this is a dream come true. It's profoundly heartening to see how much has changed since I did not accept the Academy Award 50 years ago. 50 years. All right, me personally, I wouldn't have done it. No, thank you. I would have refused that too. All right, 50 years later. Yeah, fuck you. But, you know, that's me. Uh, Little fellow was just 26 when she appeared on stage on behalf of Brando, who won for his performance as Vito Corleone in The Godfather. In the event of his win, he had asked her not to touch the statue and to read a pages long statement on his behalf. In it, Brando criticized Native American stereotypes in popular entertainment and drew attention to the 1973 wounded knee standoff between indigenous people and the U.S. Marshal Service. But producers warned her that if she exceeded 60 seconds, she would be arrested by the security. So instead, she improvised short remarks that were interrupted by boos and some making tom tomahawk gestures. Gestures. It says, Brando very regretfully cannot accept this very generous award and the reasons for this being all the treatment of American Indians today by the film industry, excuse me, and on television and movie reruns and also with recent happenings at Wounded Knee. But you ever notice how they treat people who they fuck over when those people complain, but when things happen to them, but see, let me get scriptures. I've gone way too long without, so, uh, so lucky. But I just thought I'd read that so you get a, uh, this goes to, they can't help it. This is, um, I'm going straight to the point. Uh, because this is what they've done. Uh, this is Habakkuk 2 and 16. It says, Thou art filled with shame, O glory. Drink thou also and let thy foreskin be uncovered. The cup of the Lord's right hand shall be turned unto thee and shameful spewing shall be on thy glory and you're seeing that happening all right for those of you that don't believe these scriptures are true all right this is what you're seeing here this man is going down and there's nothing he can do about it all right but he's going to try and fight futile as it is uh, his man don't want to don't want to give up his his uh, ill-gotten gains alright yeah so uh, <laughs> this is shameful to him 
That's why I just came over the wire yesterday why they've got this AI that's going to, and this is going to be worldwide, by the way. This is Klaus Schwab and his think tank buddies and those uh, uh, programmer buddies of his. They've got this idea that anything that's, you know, picking out certain words and, you know, you know, we, when we put up videos, you know, they get flagged, they get taken down. They've got this algorithm set up to whereas you got to be careful of what you say and uh, how you phrase things. And, you know, that's both spoken and typed. All right. So, yeah. So we keep telling you about Famine of the word. These devils are working on it. All right. So let's see how much more of this. Uh, here she is now currently. Well, three years ago. Uh, stark contrast from that, but hey, that's 50 years later. Uh, she told the Hollywood Reporter which was the first published by this news that she cried several minutes after first being read the apology letter almost a half century since the famous essay yes there's an apology that's due she said as my friends in the native community said it's long overdue and they give you a letter which I'm not going to read you know, you can read it for yourself. Uh, yeah, this is... And this first commenter makes a good point. And this is something that didn't, you know, didn't escape me. My focus was just on, on Gad, but this is true. It says, Marta Torres. I love and respect all Native Americans so far as I'm concerned. They owe more than I'm sorry. Uh, you know, <laughs> the wording there. Anyway, it says, this was a letter she had to read in behalf of Marlon Brando. So if there was beef, take it up with him. Don't shoot the messenger. But again, showing how fucking racist these pieces of shit are. They attacked her right off the bat. Uh, nurse from, I suppose that's Wisconsin. Good for Martin Brando. That was a heroic thing to do. Boo for all those so-called white people that made her feel horrible for standing up for her heritage. I find it so sad how white men came to this country, stole their land, and then treated them with such disrespect. It's truly sickening to think about it. Unfortunately, we still see this in our society today. And another good one. I'm glad, you know, to see these two because that John Wayne thing, that, that really pissed me off. Here it is, you have the audacity. She comes out there, and again, this is on behalf of Marlon Brando. Um, and she's highlighting the fact that, yeah, you're disrespecting, you know, indigenous peoples and your portrayal of them in your movies, you know, and, you know, TV. Uh, and you respond like that, and then this idiot backstage has to be, I heard it was six guards that had to restrain him. Oh, because he wanted to come out and try to shut the woman up. Yeah, we're talking about John Wayne. <laughs> you know, the famous actor John Wayne. The man's man. Yeah. He's a racist piece of shit. Oh, hey, so with that, you know, I'm gonna leave it there. Uh, once you know, I put the links uh, to 
to whatever else I can put together here. Yeah, but you know, like I said, the most high has a sense of humor there, you know. You're gonna make a film. Actually your fate was already sealed at this point. It had been seventeen years. So he would be dead in another five. <laughs> so whatever, you know. <sighs> hey, so with that, hey, shallow.